Sunday afternoon football. It's back. BMD Cougar I Oval, the BRL Premier A grade grand final between the Winner man, uh, sorry, the West Brisbane Panthers should mention them first. Minor Premiers 20 from 20 undefeated up against the Winner Manly Juniors here at BMD Cougar Over. This is brought to you by Chaos and it doesn't get any better. Taylor Brown and myself, John Devine, a big crowd building here at BMD Cougar. Over. And after what we saw in reserve grade, I don't think we expect anything less. Oh, what a cracking game that was. The reserve grade boys absolutely duked it out for over 70 minutes. We went into Golden Point extra time. And the field goal was absolutely sensational by Forrest. West Brisbane Panthers undefeated. 20 from 20. They've won 18 games on the trot. The closest to come to them were Belimba in round 7, 24-22. Uh, but other than that, no one's come close. They pushed them to the back end in that uh, qualifying final, did Belimba. But they've had two weeks off, Taylor Brown. You've played in premiership sides where you had those weekends off. Whereas Wynn and Manly have had a, a strong, hard hit out in the last four weeks. Who benefits from that? Yeah, look, it's really hard to tell who benefits from that. But the one thing you've got to think about with this winner Manly side is it wasn't just the hitouts in the lead up to this grand final game. They had to have a really big back half of the season because they didn't have a good start to the season. They needed to fight hard to make sure they were in the semis for about the last 10 rounds. So I think the pressure from all those rounds leading into the final series will make an effect on today. However, the Panthers, they were flowing so well and playing such good football. They had a week off, then a grand final qualifier, and then they had another week off for the grand final. So it may have stuttered what momentum they had built. So it's really too hard to tell who has the favourable position until the end of the game because hindsight's 2020, and we'll know once the big contacts start. Tyrone, uh, Ty, Ty Ingram, maybe his real name is Tyrone, but Tyrone... Ingram and I spoke to him just before the game downstairs and he said uh, they had a big hit out last weekend. They went hard. We'll go with the team list here. And first up, we've got, well, it's going to be a crackerjack lineup from both sides. And first up, the, the third place, Winner Manly Juniors. Where you go, Taylor? Yeah, at fullback, we have Brandon Jaconia, Chris Humphreys and Ryan O'Keefe on the wings. Rakeem Outer and Talita Stanford in the centres. Braden Whitaker and Christopher Green in the halves. At front row, we have Adam Tuomavave, Gerard, Savan Tahiri and Lachlan Lee. And in the back row, James Robinson, Kalepi Fakafa and Blake Pyle. Uh, a formidable four, uh, uh, front row, but their backs have certainly got some speed amongst themselves as well. So it won't be easy. Warm conditions here at uh, BMD Cougar Rivers. We go through the minor premiers, the undefeated minor premiers, West Brisbane Panthers. Colvin Claverin at fullback, Dario Taki Taki and Joe Wakalevu on the wings. Eddie Tortali and Ozzy Tohangi on in the centres. Simon Britton Snowden and Cole Foxwell are the halves. Josh Boyton, Usiah Fanongaloa and Toby Westcott in the front row. Sam Collins, Gruden Callahan, and Jai Ballinger will be at the base of the scrum. Jai Ballinger played for the Valley side last year, scored three minutes before full time to actually take the title away from the West Brisbane Panthers. He's gone from villain to hero as he lines up in the mud and blood colours. We're going to have a minute's silence when these, once these players get out here for um, Ray Florence, a founding member and life member of the West Mitchie Football Club, uh, once the players get out here. Their referees today is Josh Ebbett. The touch judges, uh, sorry, Jack Ebbett and Josh Fernan and Scott Whelan will be your touch judges. And they've got one hell of a job to do to keep this game flowing and also to keep uh, keep both sides happy. And I, I must remark the game beforehand, I thought the referee did a great job. He wasn't there very much. The only time he really saw him was when he put his hand in the air for a field goal. How many field goals were in that game? Yeah, there were three field goals in that game. It was an absolute cracking game of rugby league. As we look here at the screen, I can expect to see some players start to filter through in the next couple of minutes. The Panthers in the reserve grade already standing there with their cup in front All of right. the possible Premiership Cup there as well. Your thoughts on who will win and why? Look, I'm really undecided about this match. You look at someone like the West Brisbane Panthers, how they've gone through the season undefeated. They look unstoppable. But I've said for the last couple of minutes how crazy it is. How crazy it is to go all the way through without your flaws being exposed. Imagine if those flaws get exposed on grand final day at BMD Cougarai, home of the Seagulls. They're here with the home ground. Jeez, it's got all the makings for a good story here, John. I don't know who's going to win. I just know it's going to be nail-bitingly close. Mate, I'm looking right at you. I'm secretly just turned on, mate. You are wound up for this one, but <laughs> how good is this going to be? 100 years ago, exactly, the West Brisbane Panthers went through the season undefeated to claim the title, and back then they had a father-son coaching combination. It's uh, history repeating itself here. 
here in 2022. Ty Eaglesman and Craig Eaglesman. I spoke to Ty, as you mentioned, he's actually be, will next year be the assistant coach at the Clydesdales. He's going to Toowoomba to uh, join the Clydesdales up there. So well done to Ty. You can see him walking down here in front of me along with Goff. Uh, Trigger will be running around. He's not far behind. Uh, last year they, had, they were here. They had three sides in the grand final. They went away without any silverware. They've got the silverware in reserve grade only just and reserve A grade. Well, that's what they want. The Panthers, they played in three grand finals or two grand finals, haven't won one. Kyle Van Claven is at fullback. This is his fifth grand final. He's won one for Redcliffe. That was against the Ipswich Jets, and that was in 2016, a long time ago, and that went to extra point as well. Uh, I think a Joe Brady field goal got the, yeah, the yeah, John, Johnny Brady field Johnny goal Brady. from about 40 yep. out. So, big afternoon. But the Seagulls, this is their fifth grand final. They've won three. They lost the first one against the Ipswich Jets in 2015, comprehensively. They were too good against Valleys. They were too good against West. That second half against the Panthers, so there's a few players following up on that one. It was 8-6 at half time in front of the Winter Manly, for the Winter Manly Juniors. They ran away with the 41 points to 14 or something. It was an absolute annihilation in the second half. And this is what they need to watch out for, the West Brisbane Panthers, because they're at B&B Cougar Oval. There's a lot of green and uh, red in the stands. And look, oh, I think they're back to Heary, Jaconia, Uda. Uh, McMillan is back in the side. You've got uh, O'Keefe and Humphreys do a great job on the wings, not only defensively, but an attack. And then you've got the man, Mountain, ATG, the man with the throw. I call him the master of disaster. He's going to come out. He's going to run towards Kyle Iron Shoulders Foxwell and see if he can can't test him out. And it's going to be a great afternoon in rugby league. I can't wait for it to start, Taylor. Yeah, I can't wait either. I think one thing that highlights for me is the experience that both of these sides have trotting out for them today. Blokes by like the name of Jai Ballinger, Josh Boyton, just these very heavy hitting experienced front rowers, Leon Panapa. And then on the other side of the field, ATG, as you mentioned, Lachlan Lee, Kalepi Fakafa. But then, of course, on the bench, the veteran, Ben Shea. He's won competitions at host plus cup level for Winner Manly. Two, in fact. He knows what it takes to get it done. The Panthers led out by Jeffrey in the Panthers suit. Doesn't come out all that way anymore, does Jeffrey? But right behind him is the captain, Simon Britton Snowden, who played for Valleys. A couple of years ago, he's now the skipper, and the Panthers are the first side out on the park here. A few nerves that come a long way. As you said, Taylor Brown, the last thing you want to do is lose the big dance. We saw Normby last year go through undefeated. They got knocked out in straight sets. The Panthers, well, they've progressed. And the Seagulls, well, the third-place Seagulls, they're on a roll. Yeah, look, I could write a novel about all the skill and all the expertise that the West Brisbane Panthers have throughout this side. But the glue that holds it all together is Cole Foxwell. His kicking game, his short kicking game especially, has been sensational in the lead up to this grand final. In the back half of the year, Cole really took this side under his wing and started steering them around the paddock. I know I rip Kyle a lot, but he's one of the greatest players in this side and one of the best in this competition at the moment. I think when it comes time to stand up, Cole Foxwell's going to be the man for the Panthers. James Robinson leads out the Winner Manly Juniors, the Seagulls. Made his cup debut this year against the uh, Northern Pride to James Robinson. He scored two tries last week. It was a turning point with his hit and spin. He wasn't supposed to get the footy. He was able to get across the chalk, and that was a turning point. Uh, Chris Green scored a try. Ben Shea scored a try. And then right at the end, there was a great runaway try started by James Robinson for Whittaker to score. And they were too good to, for Belimba last week. But congratulations also to those sides who made the semi-finals. Belimba, well done. Also the Valleys and to the Beanley Pride. And then the Karina side coming in seventh. Pine Rivers, South Juniors, their first year in the competition, along with uh, the Brighton Roosters, a wonderful 10-man comp team competition. And uh, we have a minute silence now. West Mitchie passed away recently, so paying our respects to one of our own. And we're about to get underway. As I said, Jack Abbott is the referee in the charge. He 
refereed the Seagulls in the last four outings that they played. So they're quite familiar with his style of refereeing. And we talk about the, uh, the middle third. So the Chaos Premier A-grade competition is underway here. Panthers v the Seagulls. And the Panthers will kick off. And the Seagulls, well, that's a great catch down there on the, on the boundary there for the, the Seagulls. And they'll receive, they'll run to the Chook Pen in the second half. It's a bit of a, a superstitious thing for the Seagulls, always to run to the Chook Pen in the second half. So they'll negate this sun in East Westfield. Lucky Lee with a carry. Now Ben Chay, who's starting, he came off the bench last week, scored a great try to Ben Chay. He'll be tackled on the 40. James Robinson runs into Foxwell, puts a shot on him, Robinson, don't worry him, he'll get up, halfway line's going to be crossed there by Adam Tumavave, Jerry runs into the shoulder of Fongaloa. Last tackle now here for the Seagulls, it looks like they'll complete the first set, it's with Chris Green, he puts a banana kick over the top here, it's going to be knocked on, is it by Tawangi, and Tawangi will come up with an error, and the Panthers, well they're going to have to defend another set of six. Yeah, everything was going perfectly for Winner Manly in that set. They had some really tough runs, some tough carries, got to their knees and the elbows and played the ball quickly. And then at the end of that set, we saw Chris Green put up an awkward looking kick and to the naked eye, it looked like he may have shanked it. But he actually kicked the top of the ball on purpose, it seems. It fell in that little midland. Ozzy Tawangi wasn't expecting it. And then, of course, there's a juggle. So. I think there's a little bit of a veteran move there by Chris Green, purposely bringing them forward. Now they'll get first chance to shock the minor premiers, the undefeated minor premiers. He's the Prince of Kitchen. He's brought his... His... Oh, lock over. He's, uh, his castle to a BMW Cougar over. Played a lot of footy here. As Ben Shea did before he went to the Ipswich Jets. Bounces off one tackle. Still going his bench here. There's almost a one-on-one -on -one strip there from a West Cop. He's going to hang on to a Ben Shea. 12 out. They come to the blind side. It's with Whitaker. Turns it back inside to Adam Tumavave Jared. But waiting for him was Jai Ballinger. He'll get to his feet nice and quickly with ATG. They come to the left-hand side. Ducking and weaving. Trying to get across the line there is Whitaker. He's also close. They almost rolled him over the try line. To here is the dummy half. They got a set play out to the right-hand side. There's uh, flat ball. No, goes out the green. Green forward passes on to uh, Fakafa. And Fakafa will go 12 out from the try line. Last tackle now here for the Winner Manly Juniors. They go to the right hand side. It's in the hands of Green. Green takes the line. Green allowed to run. He'll take the tackle. And that'll be change over five metres out. 95 metres to the other end for the Panthers. Yeah, what you've just said there, John, is absolutely key. 95 metres for the Panthers to run. I think Green didn't want to leave it to chance. Wants to keep him pinned down here. And just thought I'll run it force them to come out of their own end. Well, they can make something out of nothing. They've got Taki Taki Tawangi and Waka Lebu who can score, score tries. Yeah, you put a goal in the end, a grubber kick into the end goal area. One of them picks him up, races down the other end here. But that was good work there from, uh, from Green. That's his experience. He played back in that first grand final back in 2015 against the Ipswich Jets. So we'll see. It's a half a break here as Tawangi and Aussie Tawangi gets to the 40 before he's finally pulled down there by Robinson. Facing the wrong way, he'll get up and play it now. Waiting for it, there is uh, the halfback in Foxwell. Finds a forward runner on Fongaloa, and Fongaloa runs into Adam Tumalave. Jerry, he looks up to see what sort of uh, house he just hit. Grab a kick out of the top, set play here. It's going to turn the winger around there for, you know, Keith. And Jaconi will pick it up right in the corner of BMD Cougar. He's got some wheels, but he's been grabbed by the Colin. and he's thrown to the ground there by Collins. Yeah, beautiful kick and chase there by the Panthers. Just tipped it over the top, forcing Jaconi to work, and then Tawongi comes through almost Gordon Tallis is in back into his in goals how about this spirited defensive line from the Panthers just the one error so far coming from the Panthers early days yet as we go on four minutes into this chaos Premier A grade grand final Panthers v Seagulls BMD Cougar Ables we see O'Keefe he did a lot of that last week and get a penalty the leg grab the referees hate the leg grab great run by O'Keefe picked his line ran as hard as he could in between two big men he just picked out Ballinger and Fenonga Loa. Got in between a couple of shoulders. Made it really hard for him to tackle him and then gets the penalty on the back. Green kicks to the upper level side of uh, BB into the breeze to a degree. You know, 
defends this part quite well. So the Seagulls with another set. The Panthers have to defend Neil All on the Chaos scoreboard. The line's just in front. It's going to be crossed by Ben Shea. Lurking outside him is Lock and Lee, but he doesn't use Lee. He goes himself and takes a tackle there of Collins. Still going is Ben Shea, along with Westcott. Held, says the referee, on the 40. Slowish play the ball here. Now it's with Lachlan Lee. Lachlan Lee tries to go between two shoulders there. And Lachlan Lee draws a lot of attention from Josh Boyd and company. Takes a tackle in the end by Collins. Dummy half is Tahiri. Goes the blind side. Half was sort of a wrap around with Lachlan Lee in the way. And Adam Tumbabe Jerry not quite as damaging just yet. I imagine when he comes on the second half like he did last week. Could be some carnage of BMD Cougarite. They go out the back here. Now with Whitaker. And Whitaker will take the tackle to the 15 metre mark. Last tackle now says referee Herbert. Options left and right, and they go to the right-hand side. Green puts a grubber kick into the end goal area. He's fielded nicely in the back plate there, and they all roll it out there with KBK. Oh, there's been some quality ends to every attacking set at the moment throughout this whole match. Chris Gain with a couple of nice touches and a run, and then returning serve, of course, the Panthers with that just that kick over the top before forcing Jaconi to work. So a real chess match we're seeing unfold here after the first five. Play down in backfield. I'll tell you what, I'm excited to see Jaconia. He was our player of the year throughout the Chaos BRL competition for 2021. He's been stuck on the wing, just forced through to the amount of players they get back here at Wyndham Juniors. But he's getting his opportunity today on the big dance to weave his magic. He's one of the most creative players that we I'm can just, offer here in Brisbane. I'm just having a bit of a giggle. Two of the funkiest hairdos on the park having a nice little chat in an A grade grand final, Adam Tumavave Jared. I think that might be Eddie Tartali. He's got himself a little bit of a it is Tartali. Crazy hairdo, the Ferrari. Reeks of Eminem. Eddie Ferrari Tartali, as they like to call him. He's, he doesn't do much in the garage, but when he comes out, holy smokes. On the 20. That's Butson. He's outstanding last year. Plays the 13. While trying to get stripped there was tough. Here. He didn't get away with it because there was two men in. On the last tackle here, that might go out on the... No one, plenty of room. Jaconi gets a nice bounce here, and there's a whole lot of Panthers coming in to get him. Gets a bit of a goose step on. He's going to be tackled 15 out from the trial line. I think there's only three Seagulls back there. Yeah, great work there by Foxwell, who came up and just smashed Jaconi up. And then you'll notice that Westcott's doing a lot of kicking out of acting nine. He's such a creative player, Westcott. I really like him. The spine for the Panthers... Maybe the difference today, there's such a quality little spine all the way through from VK to Westcott, Foxwell, and then Captain Britton Snowden. Going on with it too long. Seagulls get their second penalty. Something I noted just then with Jaconia, I don't think he did it on purpose, but he stepped off the mark and the referee stopped and made him go back. That gave time for his players to come back. Now, I don't say he did it on purpose, but if he did, it's absolute genius. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? You just, oh, and references go back and all of a sudden everybody turns up and they're ready to go. You're a lover of the game. You're so observant. You love all these little nuances, don't you, John? I do. I have no idea where my car keys are. It's all about the footy. <laughs> so you go, offload. <laughs> Look out. They start doing that. We saw it with uh, Lloyd Perrett with the Valley Diehards. He offloads. They can be dangerous. They need to wrap up the play. And there's three Panthers all over the top of Lachlan Lee. Played a lot of cup as well. And with Whitaker, Jaconia joins the line. Good tackle around the ankles there by Foxwell. Quick play the ball as Whitaker takes it himself. Whitaker knows the markers aren't quite ready for him. He's going to take that tackle 10 metres out from the try line. Just trying to find the referee in those dark colours to see where there's a six to go. Goes himself to Hiri. Close. Now he's the last tackle. Metre out. Adam Tumababe, Jared, the big unit goes over and scores. He lets the tackler know it. And Adam Tumababe, Jared, opens the account. ATG, the man mountain, he is so important to this Wyndham Junior side. He's all the heart and soul that they need. He plays that fiery brand of football week in, week out, and leads from the front. And today on grand final day is no different. Just charging forward to hearing knew it. No one was going to stop him from there. He gets one on one with Cole Van Claveren and barges over for first points. Well, I said earlier that they'd had him contained here, but not on this occasion. If we have a look at Tahiri, comes all the way from the chook pen, you're thinking ATG just smashes over the line and doesn't he let the tackler know it afterwards? Have a look at this for the chaos. Wonderful stuff, wonderful rugby league and over.
Might be Josh Point he's given it to. Or might be yeah. It is. KVK, he gets maybe. right in the middle of Westcott and KVK. He just can't be handled from that close. What a pass there from Braden Whittaker. He understood <laughs> who he had in his side and what sort of force he was coming with. How did he stop that? Throw something at him? Oh, you, you want food? Want, you want me to answer that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. Blokes like ATG are the reason why I'm in the commentary box with you. He comes back to uh, that penalty as well, Taylor. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That That's an absolute shanker. <laughs> well, last week he could not miss. He could kick a frozen chicken over from the sideline. And today he's absolutely butchered that one. This Braden Whittaker. Kick a frozen chook, you reckon? Yep. Okay. We're probably even a live one, but we don't do that because we respect that. Voice. So a restart. Flagged, flagged. The, whole, the stream's been flagged. 4-0. On the footy! But those points can be vital. You see Tyler Van Claveren gets back on the way. And over Wren. Jeez, that's the north influence in this Panther side. They love those shanky little kickoffs. They've become such an art form now throughout this competition oh. since the Ipswich Jets started it up. And the North Devils... And that influence is brought here today through the Come Panthers on, and their connection. ATG and carry. Now this is Robinson. Robinson, he just keeps going, doesn't he? James Robinson, he'll get up and play. It's a mobile back rower. Shea now. Given the opportunity by coach Jason Harris to start the game. And he hasn't let him down, Jason Harris. An interesting story, Jason Harris coming in just before the start of the season to take the reins of the Seagulls. It looked like he was thinking, what has he done at the start of the season? But seven straight wins at the back end. He's got them here in the third spot. They were always the sleeping giants of the competition, John, and they have been awoken. Green puts that kick up again. Cole Van Claveren takes it nicely this time. You're going to have to take yourself, Cole, unless you want to throw a long pass here, but you'll run into Chris Green, the kicker, so the chase wasn't too bad. Yeah, as I mentioned, the Wyndham Juniors didn't have the best start to the year. I remember a very cold day at Kitchener Park. I was discussing with Cam Anker and I said, although they aren't quite at the standard yet, if Wyndham can sneak into the final series, they will absolutely be a danger to anyone they come up against. Well, seven straight wins, and now here they are on grand final day. Yeah, the, the Seagulls, well, the Redland City, your juniors or senior level, they've always been in the semi-finals along with the West Brisbane Panthers since 2015. Chris Green has gone down here. He's got the head knock. Eddie Tatali gives the ball off now to Josh Boyton, and Boyton spins and turns, gets a flick pass back to Eddie Tatali, and Eddie Tatali's looking like a rock star out there. He gets the offload, keeping it alive. Now it's in the hands of uh, Wakalevu, and Wakalevu will go back into the field of play here. This is almost Jets footy style of rugby league. Simon Britton Snowden ends up with the footy and takes a tackle 25 metres out from the try line. Darfin dummy half down here from Westcott. Puts over the top here. It's going to be picked up in the end there by Humphreys and he'll run it out. He's counting to make a few metres here. Beats one, beats two, and he just falls over on the 20 metre line. Rugby league It's come to Kitchener. Sorry, Cougaroy. So we're going to have a pause in play here as we look at kick Chris Green. He just got caught up in a very heavy contact. I believe it was the straight runner over on that edge in Ballinger who just ran straight at him and knocked him on his backside. We can't get a shot of Chris Green's face, but I reckon there'd be some telling stories there. I've got his photo in my wallet trying to work with him. <laughs> no. Beautiful man. I'm talking about Play right on. now, John, but thanks anyway. So here we go again. As I said, the Panthers and the Seagulls always been in the semi-final since the reintroduction of the BRL competition in 2015. O'Keefe now, Wing is coming to do a little bit more work. Warm conditions here at BMD Cougar Iowa. Pops it out of the park, there's Lock and Lee in the hands of Tahiri. Now it's with Ben Shays, a little bit flat footed. You'll probably find he won't get too many more metres if he had taken tackle where he was, Lock and Lee. And he doesn't. Eight metres short of halfway. Tahiri, Adam Tumavave Jared gets across that halfway line here, but they've, got the, they've worked it out around the ankles there. It was a pretty good tackle in the end there by Collins. Green seems to have recovered, puts a spiraling kick up, and it's going to get away. It's allowed to bounce. It may go dead, end over end, and KVK lets it go dead, and they'll have a seven tackle restart on the 20. Oh, that was close. Well, you'd want to turn around if you're in a green jersey because Cole Van Claveren's got support with him, and they're running hard. That's Britton Snowden. Oh, Van Claveren's in some trouble in backfield. He's been hit after he's passed it. He's struggling. 
grabbed him that wrist. From the doctor, halfway line, just in front of the Panthers. Jai Ballinger puts a couple of left-handed fends on him and gets the footy into Wangi and Tawangi will try and stand up for uh, O'Keefe but O'Keefe will be pulled down here. A little bit of help there from Uda. Six more, Six more says effort. the referee. Interesting. Second effort. So the Panthers get their first penalty, if you will. Lots of aggression here by the Wynnum Juniors. Time off again, another. We've got Ballinger staying on the ground. There was a tough tackle from O'Keefe. Tumavavi Gerard was involved as well. He's been on a bit of a warpath here, O'Keefe. Yeah. And Ballinger's blowing up to the touch here about trying to get involved for a penalty and nothing's happening. I'm telling you. Where's the closest dairy to here? Because I think we're seeing some milk out in the middle of the oval. Uh, seen Southern before. Here's half a break here from Collins. Collins will take that tackle on the 20. Westcott's pointing to the right. He'll go left, and he does. Numbers out here for the Panthers. Eddie Tatali comes back into the field of play here. Gets to his knee and stands up, and the referee says, oh, he's lost that football. Just look, I can't see the referee for those colours. One with six to go, but no play on. Now with Josh Boyton, and Boyton pulled down by Tuba Barbe Jarrett. Still on the 10-metre line here of the Panthers. Seagulls have to defend. Kyle Van Claveren seems to have covered. Eddie Tatali goes back in. Eddie Tatali goes over and scores. The Rockstar gets the first four points for the Panthers. Yeah, well, Twinkle Toes, Tortali does extremely well here. If there's any opportunity at all on that left edge, just give it to Eddie and he'll sniff it out. They were starting to play some really good football. The Panthers moving laterally, asking questions. Van Claveren... Knew he had to get it over to that edge. He's a strong player, isn't he, Eddie Tatali? Just all uh, muscle at the top there. Another man who played for the Valley's diehards in last year's grand final. We'll have a look at the replay. Westcott to Van Claveren looping around, and you can't present a broken line to Tortali. He stands up his opposite in McMillan with ease. This would be a really good view of it, actually. Just gets outside, inside, bang. Chris Green not happy with the result there, but Tali, not much smaller than ATG. This would be a tough kick with the breeze here, John. 4-0, 15 minutes gone. It's been a seesawing match. Lots of physicality. I'm starting to wonder who the weather's going to affect more here, whether it's the Panthers or the Wynnum Juniors. Mm. Well, one thing I've noticed, remember, it was in, in Bundaberg for a confraternity and also to a degree in Mackay, the breeze can actually be, if, if it's in your face, can be a favour. You put it up high enough, allows your kickers to come through, put some pressure on the catcher, or you keep it in hand as well and try and run it down. Or... The third option, which is my favourite, is a flat kick. It goes along the ground here and just causes uncertain conversion. It's successful. The Panthers are in front 6 4. Beautiful kick there by Westcott, who's been handed the kicking duties for the grand final. Look at Eddie dancing. Like I said, a rock star with that hair. Twinkle toes to a Absolutely known for it. Known for it. So, with a couple of injury concerns for the Panthers. Cole Van Claveren grabbing in his hand. He seemed to have recovered. Chris Green for the Seagulls. Also a bit of a head knock. Fernando Lower came off quite early and they actually changed front rowers very early. The Panthers, they started with Fernando Lower. They also started... Well, Panthers, the Seagulls are the same to a degree. So okay. no, lucky Lee and TG is still out there. But um, they, they brought Buxton on fairly early for Fenonga So I'm not sure if that's an injury concern or they just wanted him to get through the first 10 to 12. Full use of an ink change for mine. You want to try and get as much out of him before you do that. But anyway, I ain't no coach as they go busting down the left-hand side. And that's Callaghan. I don't think it's called Callaghan yet. Gets up on the halfway, takes the tackle on the far side of Vera for Carfa. Tatali getting him, getting him lot. Really involved here this afternoon is Eddie Tatali trying to muscle his way through every. And Tumavave Jared finally pulls him down on the 40. 
Britton Snowden. Britton Snowden with Harper Gap steps out of one tackle. Simon Britton Snowden, clean centre, heels for the try line and scores. Simon Britton Snowden, the skipper in front of the chook pen. And back to back tries in no time. Oh, beautiful work here by Simon Britton Snowden. He recognises that Tortali had just made a considerable dent in the defensive line. He had opportunity, got himself a really long ball from Westcott at acting nine, had options on the inside and executed the perfect dummy and go. Still had lots of work to do. We'll have a look here at the chaos replay. Tortali there playing the ball. He just had the option of hitting Boyton on the inside, which done enough to hold off Lachlan Lee to hear he couldn't quite get there and just forced Jaconia to sit on his heels with lots of options. So beautiful work there from Simon Britton Snowden, a real captain's knock he's having so far in the grand final. He found two tiring forwards who weren't quite set and he weaved his way through there, didn't he, Simon Britton Snowden? And all of a sudden he went, hello. There's <laughs> a trial on a far away and away he went. Jaconia came at him a little bit high, albeit trying to knock the footy out. Wishing to be Britton Snowden takes the Panthers out to a six point lead with a kick to come. Worrying times here for the Seagulls. Time and again, Panthers get away to a fly often. Sides come back, but the lead is too great. Come the 80 minute mark. For Westcott. Penn's quiet. A few red and blacks in there, Taylor Brown. Yeah, there is Dominic a few green and green and red. Sprinkled around, I presume the reserve grade side will be there somewhere as well, carrying on. Now, one thing we didn't hear was Jeffrey. No. Very quiet. Well he's happy, but he's quiet. That's the beauty of the commentary. Yeah. Replay, he steps off the right, sees forwards Lee. No sure until here he reaches out here. He was just, already on his way, wasn't he? He just knew that Tortali had forced a considerable dent in the line. There were players the left ball. in the lurch, tired from making that tackle. It was really smart football. So Green, get things underway. Here comes Josh Britton. Spins and turns in the tackle of Ben Shea, but not before he gets across the 20. Blind side. It's with Wacker Levu. Leading try score of the competition. Gets up on 30. But Snowden, crossfield. Double pumps here, it is with Kyle Van Claver. No look pass, gives it off to Tacky. Tacky forward pass. We were right in line with it. Yeah, it was a no look pass by Van Claver, and geez, it looked good. And if Tacky Tacky had have been allowed to follow through with it, I don't think there would have been many people ready to stop him, including Jaconia. We'll have a look here at the replay. And he just throws it from the middle of that sign, and yeah. Well, you can if, the markings, mind, if the markings on the ground are anything to go by, it was a great call. Which is right there, it's a scrum feed here for the Seagulls. 40 minutes to the trial line, they're down by eight. Nine min 90 minutes to go on the chaos scoreboard. Half a break. Oh, just pulled down there was order to hear he's a dummy half off. Anyway, play on, Malatoa, Malatoa, the two thirties come together, Malatoa gets within 15 of the trial on the Seagulls, sniffing an opportunity, Lockie Lee, he's lost the tape, oh, he gets crunched, smacked to the ground, there is Lockie Lee, I think it might have been a Westcott shot, he'll get up and play it, out to the left here is with Green, now it's with uh, Whittaker, and Whittaker goes back towards the, uh, the uprights, he's going to be pulled down 10 out, Tahiri's a dummy half. Watch him from dummy half. No, he gives the offload. Throwing the dummy there is Malatoa. Malatoa loses the footy. The Seagulls, uh, sorry, the Panthers come up with it. Yeah, KDK. Malatoa just trying to do a little too much with his hands before the line. He's come on with some gusto and had some great carries, but he'll just need to curb his enthusiasm, get stuck into the rhythm of this game. I actually thought it was a bit of a masterstroke by Jason Harris to bring Malatoa to the bench and start Ben Shea because Malatoa really has the opportunity to make an impact. Kicking early in the tackle count because uh, Jacconi was up. He's the only one there along with O'Keefe. That's the 30. We saw a 40-20 in the reserve. Great game from the Panthers running from left to right. So when they notice it's uh, an opportunity, it's a pretty hard paddock out there. It's green. But it'll certainly bounce end over end. It's with Humphreys. Humphreys tries to get through. 
here around the chin. I think what we've seen from the Panthers is an attempt to play some really upbeat footy. Early kicks play on the fact that they've had a fairly cruisy finals campaign and the Wynnum Seagulls have had to play every single week. So they're trying to eat at some sore bodies. Kicking on the last is Green end over end. Sets up nicely for Cole Van Cleven because she's got that thing on her string here. But yeah, you're right. Warm conditions here at B&B Cougar Oval. With Tacky Tacky, the right wing coming in to do some work. Oh! And this ref says referee oh! Jack Abbott. Oh, oh, almost through there is a Tawangi Aussie. Tatali wants to have a crack here. He goes. Are the markers straight? Referee might have called out to Heary, but uh, Eddie Tatali gets the offload, keeping it alive with Cole Van Claveren. He'll take the shot. He gets across the halfway line. We'll get up. Fifth grand final for KBK. Tawangi. Tackle around the ankles by Ulda. Now it's the last hit, says the referee. 40 metre mark. Foxwell. It's cut down on the back wheel. Oh, flying up almost to the footy. The referee is going to call a knock on from West. And it'll be a changeover if it was the last tail. I can't remember. I think it was. That was impact forward Michael Butson who flew across the top of Jaconia in an attempt to tackle it. I mean, if you see a front row flying into a fullback, you're usually thinking we're about to catch a massive collision, but I think in the background we can see some some blokes dressed up, maybe on some sort of Mad Monday. There's a sailor. There's we talking about. <laughs> we're that every weekend. Have Except a look on footy. There's a couple of bald heads back there. That's uh, oh well, looks like a sensational time to be had in the chook pen. Ben Shay, always a good time in the chook pen. A lot of people go in there and never come out again. Shay gets up on the the twenty. O'Keefe. He's trying to do a bit of work. He's a big body, isn't he, O'Keefe? Almost a back rower size. About him. We're looking to do some tackling. We're looking for a rest shortly as we go up to the 25 minute mark. Well, there's my man, Blake Pyle. He's a quality act, isn't he, Blake Pyle? I love Blake Pyle. The way he plays football, the real fly brand. Luckily, he gets a pop pass to James Robinson. He gets another three or four metres out. Luckily, I thought he'd lost the tape, but it's still in amongst that uh, mess somewhere. It's the last. Yeah, the run that one. That's going to go oh, out on the full, will it? And it will. So a changeover. All the time in the world there for uh, Braden Whittaker. I'm not really sure what he was doing. He's taking the turn to make up his mind what he wanted to do with it. Yeah, I think he just might have thought about it a little bit too much. He had a clear-cut plan of what he wanted to do. And then with the extra metres in front of him, he thought he'd take advantage. Just trying to see if there's any, any change. It might be Ben Shea might have gone off. 25 minute mate. That's a lot of minutes and he's just making Panapa. Saw Panapa before the game. I said, you're looking fit. He's back playing foot. He said, I had to, to try and lose some weight. He's looking fantastic, as Panapa. See Tacky Tacky, and he's going to get driven backwards. Well, there's a lot of indecisions from both sides in the last couple of minutes here. What to do with the footy. Anyway, they go to the blind side. Boynton's with the footy. That's the way you do it. Oh, he gives a pop pass down here to Tacky Tacky. Tacky Tacky tries to get out of the tackle there of Lock and Levy. He gets across the halfway. Dummy half now is Westcott. Taking him to the line there is Foxwell. He gets a flick to the ground. He'll get up and play it. He doesn't worry about trying to get any more metres to the left-hand side. Testing the right defence here, and there's going to be a call for a forward pass. Oh, this is A grade, boys. There's a couple of forward passes and a couple of breakdowns and communications in their in their calls. Yeah, I think that nerves Taylor Brown. I just think both sides are seeing opportunities that they don't want to squander. So instead of holding it, just executing the right time, they're actually just overplaying their hand, hoping yeah. to be the point of difference in a grand final. I, I like, yeah, okay, I agree with that. Because something's not right with both sides. The scoreline reads 12-4. Anybody who should be playing patient footy should be the Panthers. I just think they're, it's the occasion, John. They want to be the point guard. They want to be the man that makes that difference. And, and if they see the opportunity, they know it's going to close quickly against a quality outfit. They're trying to beat them to the punch. So Taylor getting some tape on James Robinson. It is. <laughs> they put that on there. That's not coming off a couple of weeks. Time back on. The Seagulls. And then McMillan coming back into this side, oh. loses the footy. Here they go now again, the Panthers through Wakalevu. Move. 
Here we well, handling here. error, a vital one. 12 and a half out from half time on the KS scoreboard. Again, we just see Ballinger looking for somebody to run off it. Go back and play it on the mark. Westcott. <laughs> his body, his, there wouldn't be an ounce of fat on that man. He's an absolute granite on legs. Just the rocket Gibraltar. Yeah, Britton Snowden now. See, again, just catching it and throwing to anybody who might want the footy. There's no actual structure from the Panthers. Foxwell. Foxwell throws a dummy. Foxwell, Foxwell. I think he knocked it on and lost it in flight, but the referee's going to say it's from a seagull hand, and they've scored the try in Foxwell. Well, controversy. Yeah, they're going to rule here that it was stripped out in the motion of making a tackle, therefore still play on for both sides, backwards for the seagulls, and stripped, therefore still live for the Panthers. And Foxwell just gets on with it runs through the guts and slams the ball down for a try. It'll be interesting to see what the chaos replay brings up for us here. There was a steaming hole just in the middle of Malatoa. He gets through it and Jaconia tries to rake the ball and in doing so pops it up perfectly for that man in Cole Foxwell. He saw a good opportunity. Robinson was a bit late for Marker Malatoa, just a little too wide to be an A defender. Looking at the replay, it actually looks like quite a good call from Ebert. Well, from last week, the try by Chris Green was very similar to that where there was a, a strip of the ball. It came loose from Tahiri. Green was on the spot and just put his hands on it. Exactly the same things happened here where the Seagulls, not on purpose in this instance, just tried to make the tackle and then it's come up with an error. And the Panthers... How critical is that? We're still 10 minutes to go in the first half here of the Chaos Premier A grade grand final. Yeah, it's huge. And Westcott here with a fairly simple conversion by his standards. You like to think it is extended to that 18 to 4. However, Winner Manly, the juniors are no stranger to the loneliness that can be trailing from behind. They have their backs up against the wall, and in some ways they've had it up against the wall for a large part of this season, John. Very important. They're ahead by 12, this to make it 14. And he's bent that one back in just through the left hand upright. 18 points to four, 10 minutes ago in the first half. Have a look at this. It's almost like Simon Britton Snowy saw half a gap. I'll go through there and loses the footy. And have presence of mind to see where it'll land and then pounced on it as a Panther does. Well, I don't think there's any real shock to see that the Panthers have scored two tries through dummies and goes from the halves, considering the way they're playing footy. They're kicking early and trying to turn the big players from Wynnum around. They're playing the perfect attacking game at the other end of the field to complement how they're playing their exit sets. So you think we go back to what's got them to the to the spine, use their middle forwards in the middle third against the forward pack. Oh, there's been a shot put on. And Ballinger loses the footy. Now, roll up the middle. ATG scored their first try. Just pure size. Through the middle is where they need to go. It's with pile and pile. Quick play the ball. They need to rumble up the middle here. The Panthers will have to wait for it. Just cut it past Potamani. Needs a quick play of the ball. Green takes it to the line here. No look pass. Again, no look pass. It's in the hands of Robinson. Robinson spins and turns. Referee Herbert's right there trying to get to his feet is Robinson. I'm just looking for a six to go. Doesn't come from the referee. Throws the pass to absolutely nobody. That's been knocked on there by a Panther, and that should be a Seagull six more tackle right in front. The referee will, calls time off. It will be. You can see Ballinger and Wallace in that play rushing up. Going for intercepts and going to hit people early. I know it's put a lot of pressure on the attacking players, but it seems to me that there may not be confidence in the fact that they can hold out the minimum middle middles, and that's why they're going for those sorts of plays. You can see here they're rushing out going for intercepts and all sorts of things instead of just worrying about defending the play itself. Look at that. Just throw it and hope from dummy half. They're probably better off darting from dummy half than 
getting set again. But anyway, they've got the footy. Tahiri off the back gives it off to Whitaker. Whitaker does a bit of a goose step. I thought I might be forwards with order. Ten out from the try line. Whitaker. One shot at goal. Unsuccessful after the uh, Adam Tumavave Jared try. Pile gets absolutely pile waxed. Shot from the side on it from Panapa. To the right they go. It's with Green. Takes a long. Goes back the other way. Green trying to get through. Wallace. Wallace is going to grab the Prince of Kitchener. Pull him down. 10 out. 20 in from the Arthur Lovell stand side. Flat ball. Pile. Gives it off to Whitaker. Whitaker in turn to Robinson. Robinson now to order. Steps off to left. It's order. This is better play here from the Seagulls. They might not score here, but they're stretching the Panthers left, right, across their own try line. Now that's a better pass here. Gives it off to Tahiri as the first receiver. Now to Green. Green again now gives it off to Fakafa. And Fakafa will take the tackle there of uh, Callahan. 15 out. Last tackle down here for the Seagulls, says referee Urban. They go. Throws it. Dummy Tahiri. Try time. Oh. Everybody fell for it. Savan Tahiri. Outstanding work. I was actually midway through constructing my sentence after they defended this set because it just felt like there was no way through the Panthers' line. They questioned them through the middle. They questioned them on both edges to that stage. And at every single point, the Panthers not only had a man there, they had several to repel the Wynnum Juniors' attack. But Savant Tahiri thinks if there's no opportunities on the left, there's none on the right, there's got to be something straight in front of me, and there was. He splits Ballinger, who just doesn't move from marker. Callahan was too busy looking left. And Tahiri finds space straight up the hay diddle diddle. Middle stump. Got him. Three forwards. That's all he had to take on. He throws a dummy right. Ballinger misses one. Payne Park doesn't get to him. Goes over and scores and a very, very important try there for the Seagulls heading into half time. They don't want to get that leader blowout anymore. Kick should be. Oh, I'd like to say he's going to nail this one. Last week was on song. That's a great try there for Tahiri. He's very important to this Wyndham Junior side. He's played there throughout the whole season in this hooking position. He's done a marvellous job for them. Oh, he's outstanding against Bowies. Brad Tallon myself giving him the end of the match for that one. Brad Tallon watching the game from the from his yacht. And South of France, is he? Oh, no, he's not there back there. He's in, the, in the harbour, not allowed to leave the country. Because no other countries want him, but they conversion is successful. 18 10. So we're back in this contest. And went back to that middle stuff, Taylor Brown, mm. that I talked about. It's got them to this where they are at the moment here. Tahiri just wanted it more there. Drove forward, scores the try, they get around, and they know that's an important try there for the Seagulls. We're inside five minutes to go. Get under the way, Kyle Van Claveren kicks that one into the sun. There's a couple of seagulls coming together. There's going to be green, and he gives it off to Pyle. There's a collision oh! coming close Please. here. The last thing the seagulls need to do now is lose that advantage going into the sheds. He's been good coming off the bench. He's got some wheels too as well, Tower. Gets into a foot race for a big man with. Someone his own size will win that one. Jaconia. I realise he should inject himself against the tied Panthers forwards. Whitaker bounces off the tackle of Tawangi. Last tackle says the referee. Green goes back the other way. Kyle Van Claveren has to come through here and he takes it nicely, this Kyle Van Claveren. Not the first time he's had a bomb kick towards him, KBK. He's around the 30-year-old mark. He's probably close to 150 cup games, and he's been fullback most of those. Yeah, he's very important to this Panther side as well. KVK just gets above there, the experience up above the pack. Look and out. Ballinger makes another error. Less four minutes to go here. Ballinger comes up with an error. Tahiri, Tahiri, look out. Way for Whittaker to join the dance. It's with uh, Jaconia now. He finds Potamani, and Potamani... Hell says the referee in the tackle of Ballinger. Long to the right-hand side. It's with Whitaker. Whitaker sees the fourth. No look pass. Juggles it. It's going to be knocked on in the end there by the Seagulls. And the Panthers should get a scrum feed in the corner. 
geez, they can breathe a sigh of relief there. The Panthers, in, in particular, Ballinger coming out of their own end. Errors like that absolutely hurt any side. And then just win them the way they capitalised. I thought they might have been over in that corner through McMillan, but he just couldn't quite get his paws on it. Just looking at the body language, the Panthers are a little bit gassed. Huh? They do look a little bit gassed. Agree? It's been a very tough 40 minutes in the middle mm. of the sun. You've got to think now with Wynnum Juniors swapping sides, coming home with the wind at their backs. Chris Green's already had a stellar kicking game thus far. Can you imagine what sort of carnage he will wreak with a little bit of a tailwind? And running into the chook pellets, they like to do Tatar. He's a dummy half here, but they just want to try and stop the Panthers from getting down the other end. And scored a two long-range tries of the uh, the Panthers. Both individuals. Ooh, I agree, I was right in front of that, but so the touches. That's all that matters, I think. Kicking early again, looking smart. For, it's a 40-20 attempt. Oh, that one just turns an off break back into the hands of Alder. Two minutes remaining, first half. Jeez, he's a smart for Paul Westcott. He understands that the ball just needs to get to the other end. And it may not be last tackle, but let's just get rid of it. Come for a penalty. Ooh, two minutes to go. Hurry. Two minutes to go. Oh, I thought he actually lost the cold. Referee Urban. So there was a hand in there. Hines touch. <laughs> 90 seconds remaining, a full set. Robinson. Jeez, if they put some points on the board here before half time, Taylor Round, there'll be a. Bit of paintwork coming off the uh, oh, Zach Wallace <laughs> hunting yeah. Pyle's head. If he, uh, yeah, there could be some paint coming off from the Ingersons at half time if they sw uh, squandered this lead that they had 14 points. Pyle again, jeez, he's, there's not much to him, Pyle, but he just keeps going. He's got that right body height, hasn't he? Just hard man to tackle. Green, first receiver. Potomani. Last one says the referee. Green, is there a grubber kick? Is there a crossfield kick? They're going to run it. It's with Robinson. And Robinson will take the tackle. I don't know whether he knows it's the last there. There's Robinson and it'll be a changeover. Probably what Green did earlier and let's just take the tackle. Don't have any broken play and set their defensive line now for this last 35 seconds. Well, there's 30 seconds to go, and if I were the Wyndham Juniors, I would just absolutely scream up and bash anyone in a red and black jersey. Oh, just work, just switch it to the opposite side. Tacky, tacky, quick play the ball to Cole Van Claveren. Oh, he does a little chuckling there. There's Tawangi. Panthers are facing a chance to try and get some points on before. Watermelon juice or whatever you have at half time these days. They go to the left hand side. It's in the hands now. Wallace and Wallace will get up. This will be the last play. Does he put it on the toe? You bet. Here he goes. Puts a little chip kick over the top here. And in the back there is Humphreys. End over end. Humphreys is still waiting for the footy to land in his hands. He'll go forward and have to take the tackle. Tries to get away from one. Tries to get away from two. Dancing, weaving, ducking. Looks like Taylor Brown underneath the mirror ball. And that will be half time. And the Panthers lead 18 10 over the Seagulls. What a half of footy. A few errors in there and a lot of nerves too, Taylor Brown. Oh, quality football, end-to-end -end stuff. A real grind here in the BRL A-grade grand final for 2022. The Panthers shot out to that lead, but the juniors giving them a lot to think about. The ATG crash ball and the Tahiri try all up the guts of their defensive systems. Yeah, 18-10, they'll wait. They need that Tahiri try before half time. As go through the try scorers, Adam Tumavabe, Jared in the eighth minute, and Tahiri in the 33rd, and then Whitaker. And then for Panthers, the rock star, Eddie Tatali, Westcott, Britton Snowden, and Foxwell, 18 points to 10. As we uh, go to the sheds, we'll go to the highlights of the first half, and what, what a package it was, and it was the halves of Foxwell and Simon Britton Snowden for the Panthers. Yeah, we'll have a look here. This is the Tortali try. Great work getting the ball to the right man at the right moment. Diving over in the corner is Tortali. And this one from Snowden, again off the Tortali run. He just recognised there were some tight boards in the middle of the park. Dummy and goes himself. Doesn't need any help. He decides to take on Jaconia on the outside. 
smartly switches the ball to make sure there's no interference and slams it down. It seemed like the whole running of the play was with the Panthers and then Foxwell, very similar to the Britain Snowden try, except with the added rake from Jaconia. Foxwell regathers and scores, so it was all Panthers, it was all red hot stuff until Savant Tahiri split them open from the marker here. Callahan goes one way, Ballinger doesn't move, Tahiri takes advantage and Wynnum claw back the deficit to an 18 point to 10 differential at half time. Yeah, a bit of a juggler there in the corner from McMillan. Humphrey could have got himself a try, a grand final try, doesn't get any more special than that. The Chook Pen's going to have some refreshments. The players are having a refreshments. Taylor Brown and myself, John Levine, will have a refreshments. 40 minutes to go in this chaos. A-grade competition season to go. 18-10. We still don't have a clear-cut winner. Join us for the second half very, very soon.
Hooter has gone. The players make their way out shortly. 40 minutes remaining in this Chaos Premier A grade grand final. 18 10. Panthers lead the Seagulls. You can see the try scorers on there, and the Panthers, well, they have won 20 games in a row this year. The last game they lost was the grand final last year here at BMD Cougar I over with three minutes to go when Jai Ballinger scored for the diehards. That's the last time they tasted defeat, the Panthers. Seagulls, well, they finished third. They're up against it with an eight-point deficit, but funny things can, can happen in the grand final. Lovely conditions here at BMD Cougar I Oval. You can see the breeze. It's a westerly, 12 knots. It's picked up this afternoon. Taylor Brown. What can we expect? I think we're going to expect both of these sides to come out fairly hard and fast. Far, fairly hard and fast. <laughs> fast and hard. Have a go at me. Guys, have a go at me. Jeff, tell me those boys at half time. Fast and hard. Sugar. They're going to work very hard for each other. That is the Hastings Deering's Colt side there in their outfits. That's Ben Farr in a Spider Man suit looking a treat. They're watching on, but I think we can expect both of these sides to come out. With a lot of fire and aggression, the battle in the middle is going to be very intense. We can see the Ingebrigtsons have left their post, heading for one final time yeah, to brother, their positions. As father and son, as I said, Ty going to the Clydesdales next year, the new side in the Host Plus Cup. Craig Gibson, I'm not sure what he's doing next year. But that doesn't matter. He wants to get a grand final. He's never won a grand final at the high level. He's lost two, maybe three at at the top level at either the Intrust Super Cup or the Host Plus Cup. Remember the PNG Hunters beating him 30 seconds to go. The pride under Jason Demetrio. Not too good from that day when he's coaching the East Tigers as they were back then. The Panthers, well, they're just strolling out 40 minutes away from that elusive grand final. This is the third attempt since the reintroduction of the was in rugby league competition in 2015. It's Italian. I don't know <laughs> what happened with that hair. It's looking terrific. It's not dead. <laughs> oh, you can't, couldn't pay me. I haven't hair for, for a start. The Seagulls, so they came back in that second half, Taylor Brown. I thought they were, they went back to what's got them into third spot and into this grand final. And that's rolling up the middle and taking on. Adam Tumabava, Jared is due to come back on. Along with Ben Shea, I think once those two players get back on the park, if the damage on the scoreboard isn't too bad, you could find a see a fight back coming from the Seagull. There's Eddie Tatali. Now, Eddie Tatali, he's a big unit. He's played a lot of games for the West Brisbane Panthers in the number four jersey. And he's no stranger to causing havoc. He scored a try in the first half. Defensively, they say he may be a little bit suspect, but at the moment, they haven't really tested that out. And for the Seagulls... This man. Svon Tahiri. He's so, the key. He's the key. If he can get things going, he scored that try here, but he can he takes to the line, decides whether to run it or pass it, keep the defensive line guessing, especially in a tiring forward pack from the West Brisbane Panthers, he can cause some havoc. Watch him to call on ATG and also to Ben Shea when they come back out the park here. But he's got some big bodies out there at the moment that can do the job for him. He's outstanding. Then you've got Whitaker and Green, his lieutenants on left and right hand side. If they get involved and make gaps, they can get through. O'Keefe, Humphreys need to come and do some walk along with Oda and also from uh, Jaconia. But the forwards need to win this battle in the middle of the park here. Second half about to get underway. Chris Green gets us underway. 40 minutes remain. The scoreline 18-10 on the Chaos scoreboard. And we are underway. Seagulls. The halftime chat would have been go back to what we've done all year from Jason Harris. Ty Egerson and Craig Egerson probably saying, look, go back to what us... I've got 20 wins in a row. Yeah, I think that both coaches will have questions about some of their defence and tell them to brick up and work hard for each other in the next 40. Both coaches yeah. will have seen opportunities in the other side that they will be conveying to their troops right now. I think in particular the, uh, the forwards need to watch that man, Simon Brittensnail, and also Kyle Foxwell. Here's Leon Panapa, his second carry of the set, gets, gets an offload. Him. Catch and pass, catch and pass. Kyle Van Cleveren, I don't know what he meant to kick that. Is that a knock-on or play-on? Referee's going to say it's a knock-on from KVK. I meant to do it, sir. Yeah, of course. Of course he did. Well, it's unfortunate that that ball was dropped because 
the way that the Panthers were rolling, it was quite promising to start off the second half. Now, it might have just been what Wynnum needed to snap back into focus because you could tell from the collision and the contact that the Panthers had come out just a little bit more red and with a little bit more enthusiasm than we saw from the juniors. They were really scared. One of these, what's happened here? Just a little shell shock coming out of the sheds. Catching pass from the Panthers after a pretty handy run there from Solomon Vickers Slug. So the scrum's going to be fed 20 in from the Arthur Lovell stand. Eight metres inside Panthers territory. Sweeping around is Whitaker. Trying to create an extra round. Jaconia gives it off now to McMillan. McMillan, McMillan goes back into the field to play. They're running out of Cougar Eye grass. He'll get up and play it. Dummy half is Humphreys. Panthers just coming back on side now. It's with Whitaker. Now he finds a big fellow in Fakafa, and Fakafa tries to drive forward, but Wallace is waiting for him. He'll stand there. He finally falls down. Hell says to the referee, this is more like it. Here's that man, Pyle. He gets the offload to the lock forward there in Malatoa, and Malatoa is going to take the tackle of Ballinger. Held again, they're standing in the tackle. Taylor Brown wants them to go left. They go that way. Whitaker, ball back underneath, trying to get through now. Is Alder and Alder has been met defensively there by Collins. Hard man to get passes. Sam Collins. Potamani bounces off one. Doesn't bounce off Cole Van Claveren, so nobody's in the in goal area. Last tackle now here for the Seagulls. Green gets a terrible pass. It's going to be picked up in there by Fakaf. He gives it back to Green. Green puts the grub. A kick into the in goal area. It's going to be tidy up the back there by Wakalevu. An ugly end of the set there, but they got a long way to go, the Panthers. Yeah, it was very ugly end to the set. And I was unsure how Chris Green was going to play it. Didn't get many options in the end. But regardless, Panthers have a long way to move. Good defensive set here, the Seagulls, without giving a relieving penalty the breeze is certainly favoring the seagulls ballinger gets the offload look out look out oh a couple of defense comes across and has to do so there from robinson throws a dummy does well that's the last one says the referee just short halfway puts it high in the air this fox oh was he taking out i think he was committed to that tackle for mine and two seagulls flew for that one it ends up with humphreys humphreys beats one two finally he's been pulled down and jumped on the back of there by tawangi yeah beautiful kicker uh, jump there from humphreys he got up and then wasn't keen to just take the tackle he worked very hard to get inside in a better position and the positional battle is so far being won by the juniors to start off this half Order to the 40. As Kings, dummy half as he go himself. He does try to skip his way through the forwards here. Takes a high one from Boyton. Before he falls down right on the 30. Tahiri. Pile. Oh, good grab there from Malatoa. How he did that, I have no idea. It's the last tackle, says Jack Ebert, the referee. They go to the left hand side. It's with Whitaker. Thinks about a kick in the end goal area. Does was that played out? Is he offside? And the referee says no play on the Panthers come up with it. Really lucky deflection there by the Panthers. Just come off the boot and landed beautifully in the hands of Ozzy Tawongi. But they'll need to work hard here. I wouldn't mind seeing one of those early Westcott kicks, maybe on the fourth tackle. Seagulls defending. They've gone down there again without coming away without any points. 18 to the half time score remains. Catching pass. Flat footed stuff. Gets the offload. He's outside of Humphreys. Turns it back inside now to Wakalevu. And Kyle Van Claver will be tackled 22 metres out from the troll line. Quick play the ball. Here they go. Eddie Tatali, the big dog, goes forward. Bounces off one. Still going Eddie Tatali. Gets the offload now to Foxwell. They go to the right-hand side. Trying to get through there as the back row. I think it might be Collins. Still going as Collins. Thinks about a flick pass. Loses the footy. Referee will say six more. Seagull, try time, and over they go, the Panthers, they've gone the length of the field, touched by a Seagull, and the Panthers come up with four points. Yeah, a little bit of hot potato there, John, by the Panthers, they saw an opportunity, they didn't know where it was going to be, scrambling defence by Wynnum, they're pushing the ball left to right, they get the six again call, the ball ends up in the hands of Zane Wallace, and he just tucks his chin down, revs up and goes as hard as possible forward as possible and ends up with four points good work from the hard-nosed middle there in Zane Wallace 
But I think really the straw that broke the juniors back was that six again call. You could see straight away they just they put their head down almost instantly. It would have been nearly impossible to hold them out for another set. Panthers, well, all the sheds. Great try there to Zane Wallace. Number 15. He's played a lot of football this year. That hooker for this outfit. Westcott as well being there at nine. But Zane filling in at front row at lock. Probably at the edge at some stage as well. He's a hooker by nature. He's very short in stature, but he has a massive motor. Short, nuggety to the ground. He's hard to stop. He's been one of the best here for the Panthers, the most consistent throughout 2022. Just to take it out to 14. By 12. Right in front should be a problem, and it isn't. So 24 points to 10. Yeah, it was just uh, that six to go again. They were shelled shot, weren't they? And Wallace, well, he did it all himself. The Seagulls need to regroup. Put that behind them. They've got a lot of points in on the Seagulls. They just... When does Jason Harris bring back Tumavave, Jared, and... I think, I think you hold on just a little bit further, John. I think you hold on just a little bit longer. We're not in dire straits just yet. There's a long way to go in this football match. We talk about Wallace. You're talking about William Wallace is saying, hold, 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 hey, Taylor Brown. I am. Yeah. the big dogs. I'm saying hold. All right. I don't know what the score, the uh, interchange card saying, how many they have left, but I'd be, if anything, I might put Ben Shea on shortly because I know he can do 30 minutes, and if it went into extra time, he'd be able to pump that out comfortably as well. It's a tally. Down there somewhere, there is. Go up and play it. Britain Snowden. So they're trying to tie these forwards out from the, the Seagulls. I'm watching the Panthers come back towards these forwards and make them do some tackling. Last tackle on the halfway line there here for the West Brisbane Panthers. 24-10 on the chaos scoreboard. Little kick over the top. Nicely taken. And another one. And that will go into touch. Enterprising stuff there from Kyle Foxwell. He won't be too upset with that end result there, Kyle. He chanced his arm. He dribbled it in towards that corner. I guess he thought at least if we don't get a touch, it's going to roll out. He was backing Dario Taki Taki to be able to get there in time. He just missed the assignment there. It dribbled out a little bit too far, but it's a good result in the end. Look at where Wynnum have ended up with the ball. Well, the Panthers did the same thing. They've got six more to go, though, to get over in the 80 metres. We'll see. Just run the forwards and there's McMillan. So, we'll use the, the nippier men, save some gas for the bigger players. It's a good carry. Nice one there for Nathan Pyle. Oh, oh just smash on the face of Callaghan. Get up and play it. Witty Gus, he's half a gap here, but it closes pretty quickly. This is just being disciplined. Jaconia trying to get away from Collins. Doesn't do so. Green puts a high one up into the sun here at BMD Cougar Oval. Flies Kyle Van Clavering class. Well done from Kyle there. He had the wind against him. He had the sun against him. He had about 10 green jerseys mm. against him and still manages to get up over the pack. Solid. Oh, thank God. Scoring the quickest try I can ever remember for the Redcliffe Dolphins. Against the Tigers. That's it. It's been about seven seconds from the kickoff. Short kickoff, it regathered him in a little way. Long time ago. You see the uh, strongy. They're almost the halfway. Kicking early. The wing is not back there in. Uh, O'Keefe, so Jaconi has to tidy it up. Does a bit of a step here, but there's no way through. So good chase there by the Panthers. They've done that probably half a dozen times, haven't they? Uh, Taylor Rank kicked early in tackle count. Yeah, Westcott has really yeah. led the charge there, kicking and following through on his own kick. See the back three from Wynnum getting to work, helping out the forwards. 
We've got Apple Kapanais here, the PNG international. He has been named in the World Cup squad for the end of this year in the Kummels. Nice, the press legs are on the park here, so that buys a little bit more time for Shay. And, oh, he's lost that. It's for Car for Eddie Tatali will come up for the footy. Britain Snowden, worry about a bit of a knock to the back of the head. He says play on. Yeah, just the way he made that tackle on the much bigger for Carfa. Seemed to have got his head, possibly his neck in a wrong position, and he's come reeling out of it. Ballinger and Boyton, second and third receiver. Lovely stuff. Here he goes again, does Ballinger. It's away from one. Pushes away McMillan. Gives the offload now to uh, Westcott. Now with Wallace, the try scorer, and <laughs> Wallace gets one right in the ribs there. This from uh, Pyle. Come the blind side. Kick over the top here, and he's going to be interviewed with the back plate, and it's going to be tidy up there by Humphreys, right in the corner of BMV Cougar Oval. So they get a long way to go here, the Seagulls. Yeah, a long way to go. Really good touch there by Callahan. We need a brick up here, the Panthers. Chris Green asking for a. Perhaps a shoulder charge with a touch. He doesn't get it. Cup of nice. 14 points, still the margin. I'm guessing in a matter of moments we'll see at least Ben Shea warming up and getting ready to go back out there. And he will be shortly followed by ATG. 25-minute mark is on the horizon. It's with Green. Low flat kick. <laughs> Michael Levy is just saying, I'll oh, wait for that to come to me. That's going to go in oh, over oh. in, and that will go dead. Yes, it does. So, the breeze not favouring the Seagulls in that instance. I'm not surprised. Well, I am surprised they haven't gone for a 40 20. He just had enough faith in it there, didn't he, Waka Levu, to say <laughs> that'll dribble out. Even even when it was kicked, he was actually just strolling back and saying, I don't have to do anything with this. And it would have rolled a good 30 metres yeah. before it hit that line. Panthers look to the bench, and here comes Butson. Mm, pushing in the rock. If they don't start curbing this here, the juniors, it looks like the Panthers might be rolling over the top of them. We know they have more in the gas tank. We know their bodies will be feeling a lot fresher if you look at the month's footy they've had compared to the juniors. So they need to lift here. Otherwise, it may be too big of a hill to get on top of. Nobody's moved anywhere here at BMV Cougar, right? What a day of footy we've had here, John. Beautiful conditions, great crowds, quality rugby league, the Roosters winning the 20s, and then falling short in reserve grade in a cracking match to the Panthers. 29 30-29. 30-29. Three field goals. 30 metre line here for the Panthers. Colvin Clavin joins the back line. They create an extra man here, but the defence is good on the far side there from McMillan. I beg your pardon from Ulder. Trying onto his back. Panthers threatening. They want it over to the left hand side. Wackalevu screaming for it. Eddie Tatali screaming for it. He wants to play there. Last tackle. Cole Van Claveren doesn't put it on the toe. It's with Foxwell. He puts a cross-field kick. McMillan will take that in the end. I think he was expecting Humphreys to take it. He realised the wind was blowing it towards him. Lucky. Humphreys now with the footy. Yeah, I think that the Panthers even got caught by surprise there. They didn't think Foxwell would actually grant their wish and kick them. Mm. And they didn't move up at all. It was a bit of a stalemate almost in the middle of the middle of the game well, we, haven't, we haven't followed we haven't chased so you can just catch that one and then we'll just uh, we'll reconvene in 10 seconds yes quick play the ball Lockwood Lee's back on the park here Lucky Lee a good carry across the halfway line last tackle for the Seagulls it's with Green a lot of heat coming through puts that high into the sun here for Kyle Van Claren. he takes it one knee down and he'll take it back over to the 20 it's over the 30. Geez, he didn't look comfortable underneath it at all, Kyle Van Claveren, but that's another great catch he's taken in the sun. To hear him down the back play, he'll get back up, though. They don't seem like big moments in the matter of this game, but if either of those had been dropped, we could have been looking at a very different scoreline and story. Oh, I'm a bit of a 
held to there by Millen. Eddie Tatali from dummy half. Still going to Eddie Tatali and finds Green's face. <laughs> gives the offload there to Britton Snowden. In turn, gives it off to Foxwell. Hangs on to the ball to Foxwell before he gets a ball nor tackle there from Robinson. Potamani comes to the sideline from the Seagulls. Land a run here it's with Ballinger. Ballinger hangs on the ball, pointing. Yeah, too many fools for that. All I've seen in there. Play on says the referee, no advantage. You just look at the body language here of the Wynnum Juniors. Piles in a lot of trouble. They've brought Leon. I think they need to start looking to bring on Ben Shea now. I said it almost 10 minutes ago. They Piles. need a leader out there. They need someone to point their nose forward and say, lads, this is the way to go. That's a great charge from O'Keefe. Yeah, I think Piles actually just gassed. The work warm conditions. He's, there he is now, but goes to Lockie Lee and Lockie Lee. Similar to what he did before, gets across halfway. And goes down, it's going on pile, throws a dummy, and the Panthers didn't fall for because there's no one there to pass it to. Dahiri. Green. Finds that man in for Carfer who made an error before, gives it off to Jaconia. He puts a kick in behind. Kyle Van Claver's too smart. He's there, covered that one quite easily in the end. I well, see ATG on the sideline here with a card in hand. He's getting ready to come back on. He might be exactly what they need to just point their noses forward and say, lads, this is the way we need to be going. But only, they need something yeah. here, the juniors, because they are running out of gas quickly. There's only 20 minutes to go in season 22. Well, the Panthers have only scored one try in the second half. So they've held quite nicely. Ben Shea's got a card in hand too, but that's inside. Jaconia. He's by himself. There's two, four, five, six, seven, eight Panthers and one Seagull. They'll take the tackle. Whitaker's back there. So is O'Keefe. Finally. So a few Seagulls. Ben Shea comes onto the park. They're just a little bit down and out here. You can see it in their body language. You can throw a blanket over the Wynnum Juniors. Order. Half a break. One hand pick up by Tahiri Ben Shea, high score last week. Rafa Nutrice watching from Canberra. Geez, their defence has been good here. The Panthers, Lachlan Lee. Now it's the last. What's Green under? He's on the right hand side. Puts one high, a mid range bomb. Cole Van Claveren tests it again, flies up and takes it easy as you like. It's almost like a balloon. Yeah, I wonder. Floats into his hands. I wonder at what stage they're going to switch tactics here because that's the fourth bomb they put up to Van Claveren in the opening 20 minutes. And he's diffused them all, one looking a little shaky, but still comes down with it in hand. So you need to go, right, this sun's not doing the trick. The wind's not doing the trick. Maybe we need to start playing some positional battles and kick it into a corner. Six more, says the referee. And that's not ideal on the halfway line. So they've got five more tackles here for the Pampers. Britton Snowden. Calvin. Underneath there is Green. Eddie Zatali throws a dummy. Eddie Zatali, he had a great day today, isn't he, Eddie? He oh, is. Throws a long ball to, or a pop pass, I should say, to Simon Britton Snowden. Oh, finally gets dragged to the carpet there by for Carfa. Proving a handful this afternoon is Simon Britton Snowden. Josh Boyton. Grabbed by Shea and Lee. Helps as a referee. Danger time here for the Panthers. Going across and the Seagulls leak another one. And that's Beautiful. taken out of 28-10. Beautiful slide of hands here from Ballinger to Foxwell. They had them stripped. And the, the juniors just reeling, backing up. I thought Westcott actually might have thrown that one short, but instead he goes out the back to Ballinger, who has a beautiful tip on. Foxwell, a great line, charging into it. Not what you'd expect from a half, and I think it caught the juniors' back line just a bit off guard. That's a double for Cole Foxwell in the grand final. As we have a look at the replay, Butson draws in the numbers. Ballinger attracts plenty of attention as well, and Foxwell... Positions himself beautifully, runs a great line. 
He's all hips here. Can't be stopped from that close by Rakeem Outer. And he's having a whale of a game here, Foxwell. A double in the decider. Good stuff there from Ballinger. Look at that catch pass. Play was on. I was assuming Ballinger might have a bit of a charge himself. I was expecting him to can pass from left to right. He found his mark pretty well. So with the kick here to come, they're now chasing more points than there are minutes left in this match. I don't think they can hold onto the Tour Mavave Gerard card for much longer. I know he's a big man. I know this may be a struggle for minutes, but if you have any cards up your sleeve, this is the time to play them. Well, there's no next week. There's no next week. And there certainly won't be any time after 18 minutes at this rate. Conversion is successful. 30 points to 10, 20 points. Five from five for Westcott today. He's had a really good game with the boot. In fact, the whole spine for the Panthers have had an outstanding game so far. Very classy. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Nice. Um, a six into the spine, but is it, are they part of the yeah, spine? The six? The spine. Seven, six, nine, and one. I need to go back to school and do some anatomy lessons. They're part of the spine. Seven, six, nine, one. <laughs> Green. Puts that one in. The sun coming through. Oh, he's got it in the end. There's Whitaker. Whitaker takes the tackle. 12 out from the try line. Oh, the seagulls flying high here. Ben Shea's with a footy, and Shea will drive forward towards the the 10 metre mark. They score here. And momentum can do a lot of things. Whitaker to Robinson. Robinson pops it out to Whitaker. They lose some ground here. There's Whitaker. Tries to get away, ducking, weaving, trying to get through. Beats one, beats two, but not the third. Nine out. Dunning half. Run from order. It's close to the sideline. Humphreys is dumb in half now. Whitaker. Panthers holding firm. Tahiri. Gets the offload of the cup and nice. Eight out. Hands still not the air from referee. Six more to go here for the Seagulls. Deja vu. Tahiri throws the dummy again. Gets close to the try line. There's a couple of forwards in his way. See the Seagulls can make the Panthers play like they did. But six more to go. No way through there. Referee's right there though. He's going to say no. Short. There's about four Panthers involved in that tackle, so numbers are short on this side for Carper. For Carper beats one, doesn't beat the second one. Ball and all tackle coming over the top there was Britton Snowden. Whitaker. Shea. The most handsome of structure. Gets the offload now into the hands of Green, and Green is denied by an inch. Tahiri at dummy half. The Panthers, the mud and blood wall is holding firm. Charging onto this one is Kapanias, and Kapanias is right next to the upright. That will be a changeover. The defence here from West Brisbane may just be the defensive set that wins them the game. They've got one more tackle to get through here. Last tackle. And if they can hold out this may be the game not for time there's plenty of time but more for the, ment the mental strength they'll gain from it the clarity so he was trying to do it himself there and there's no way through so a little change over greeny in the back play is going what was that <laughs> did you see him Tom? he was going no, i missed him it's just it's doing time on yeah, it's a uh, good enterprising play from the kickoff. Whitaker coming up with a 40. I thought he briefly was going to go all the way. Tim Vave, Jared, they've, they've let him off the chain, but he's still on the lead. They haven't let him out yet. He's champing at the bit. 15 minutes to go now, surely. Coach Harris has to let him go. I wonder if ATG's not. 100% maybe. Oh, he's got a card in here now. He's pacing the sidelines. I don't think they can stop him for much longer. No. Britton Snowden. A bit of a skip and dump, jump. 
Simon Britton, Snowden himself, man inside, turns it back inside, that's the ball game. Wackalabu scores for the Panthers. Simon Britton, Snowden stamping his class all over this chaos A-grade grand final. And the eager Britstons are cuddling each other in the background. They think that's enough. 34 to 10, 14 minutes to go. Wackalabu backing up a perfect Simon Britton, Snowden run. And I guess, in so many ways, the way he carried this ball could sum up the West Brisbane Panthers season. There was absolutely nothing doing, but Snowden forced the fact. He knew there were tied players in front of him. He knew there may be something coming around out of nothing, so he just kept the ball in play, running, pushing, dinking, diving. He gets the ball here. He knows Fakaf is in front of him struggling. He goes across the face of Green. They can't stop him from there. Wackett Levu backing up on the inside as the perfect winger does. <laughs> the swan dive. I think you can almost say that's it. The Panthers right the wrongs of 2021 and look like they've gone back-to-back -back reserve grade and premier grade in 2022. Lucky that wasn't in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Levy coming through your face. Yeah, that's uh, a bridge too far now. You think for the Seagulls, they had an opportunity, short kick off. Whitaker grabs it, makes about 20 or 30 metres. Get denied right underneath the crossbar. So here he probably overplayed his hand, took the tackle. Green wanted out to the right hand side, and then all of a sudden they rolled down the middle. And Simon Britton Snowden, as he's done on several occasions, able to make easy means this time down the left hand side and as all good wingers do support plate before the scores in 66 minutes feel faithful starting the leaves suggesting they don't think it's doable westcott hasn't missed one i don't think Tom? no one 100 percent oh, this is a six from six no, there you go kiss of death thank you <laughs> Five from six. So as they attempt that goal, 24 points the difference. That's four converted tries in 12 minutes. They finally struck ATG out to the middle of the paddock. Did he have that leg strap to start the game? I don't think he's got a... Maybe there could be a knee issue. Yeah, I think he's probably just... One thing's for sure is this is going to have to be a very quick one if they get it done. A very, very quick try to start it off. Well, Panthers will be aware of that short kickoff that Whitaker got. Green does it again. It's almost a rugby union kickoff. Whitaker, no, it comes off a Panther face. The Seagulls have come up with a footy. They need to score in this set of six. Simple. Mathematics is Lachlan Lee. Just in 30 this lead. There's no black back line here for the Panthers. Here's Adam Tumbawe, Jerry's first carry, and he draws three Panthers. Oh, he's almost like a wounded ant antelope on the prairie. They pounced on the big fella. Green, allowed to run. Green turns an underball to Ben Shea, goes sideways as Ben Shea runs around one of his own plays. He's going to take the tackle, and he does so. Still going is Ben Shea. Ben Shea for the tie line. Ben Shea's getting close. Well, now they're going to now call, they the, call penalty. the penalty for an obstruction way back. That's ridiculous. Well, he should have taken the tackle. See, he should have gone down at the time when he was sur surrendered the tackle. But he's, he's gone on with it. But he's gone forward. He breaks the tackle and has an opportunity to score a try. Yeah, you got to surrender the tackle. I just because he wrapped around 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 play. Around but, around he's, but he stopped. And he's well, he stopped and, and submitted. And then I blow the penalty. Well, hang on a second. If the advantage still rules, blow the penalty. Well, they tried. I don't know why they didn't get that far. The referee realised. Hmm, so <laughs> if he Pace still has he, three of the obstruction rules, he stood still for ten seconds. Yeah, that's four I maybe I don't know enough about rugby league. What am I doing? He took a lot of hits, didn't he? What am I doing? Mm. Thirty-four ten. Chaos scoreboard. Fresh leads here now. It's the power. 40 meter line, Panthers Matthew Butson and he'll come up with an error. Ten minutes remaining in this 
Chaos Premier A grade season. Many thanks to the Winner Manly Rugby League Club, Club for hosting this in their second year, the Brisbane Rugby League Grand Finals. Big crowds. Oh yeah, massive crowds down here. The Chook Pen always full, especially when you have such quality football on display. It is always full, if you know what I mean, especially this time of the day. Comes back out the side. So I'll pack the scrum so that it can come back out the side. Clock keeps rolling. Set play here. They've got four on three. They don't go. They go two on three. Interesting. It's the first flick pass. Oh. Humphreys. Humphreys is on his way to try. He's only got the fullback to beat. Carl Van Claveren comes out of him and Humphreys will score an easy try from the set. Scrum. Yeah, Chris Humphreys there. Just waiting on the wing like any good winger does for his opportunity. And out up provides him that from the scrum. There was absolutely nothing doing there for a stage. Well, three on two, Taylor Brown. I'd said they'd gone the wrong way. Order makes a little bit of a break, draws the outside man, gives the ball off to Humphreys. Away he goes. He had, to, I think, might have been uh, Ballinger or Boyton coming at him, and then Cole Van Claveren in the end. And Cole Van Claveren actually got there in time to actually make him not go close to the upright. So it's going to be a tough ask here. Whitaker strikes it nicely, but. Uh, he kicked Let's the goal see how too. The goal, he's, well, he we'll didn't have, have time to think about it, like your goal kick. Well, we'll just have a look here at the replay. He gets the flick pass away, and oh, look, it looks a bit shonky there on the chaos replay. But what's done is done. Certainly no captain's challenge here in the BRL. So the score now, 34 to 16. Well, I think they still is. need... I think our bunker will be better than their bunker. <laughs> they still yes. need... 18.3 converted tries in eight minutes. It's going to be a whirlwind of an eight minutes if that is to be what is to be. To look for a massive kick right into the, the shadow, starting to creep across. That's going to go down Chris Green's throat, right on the try line, right in the shadows. Adam Tumavave pushes off the, underneath the scoreboard and <laughs> decides to pick out Collins. So there you go. But Collins hangs on to him. The big cuddly bear. It's like looking at the birthday conscription. He's coming across. Who's it going to be? It's going to be you. Oh. <laughs> what did I do? Really? Lachlan Lee now. Lachlan Lee. There's some good metres here from Lachlan Lee. Still going as the big Irishman. He almost gets to the halfway line. To here is a dummy half. 34 points to 16 on the chaos scoreboard. Malatoa takes a tackle. Um, ATG. He goes on the shoulder of Tahiri, goes back underneath, flat-footed as uh, ATG, but he still gets a few metres, gets to the 30. Last tackle says referee Jack Herbert. It's in the hands of Green. Throws the ball to Whitaker. Whitaker, Whitaker gets the ball to Green. No, he goes to his feet and the Panthers dive on it. Oh, what might have been Taylor Brown? Oh, geez, if Green manages to catch that ball and scores in the corner, it's a completely different game, but with seven minutes to go, oh, there's a high tackle. Look out. It's Shays in the mix of it. The boys just need to let this one go. <laughs> oh, Ben Claverin gives the chook pen a wave. He's asking to calm, calm down or look at the scoreboard. It's just under seven to go. 18 points the difference. Points touches Britain Snowden. So I think now, John, it's safe to say the Premiership Cup is heading to Franklin Doval. They've done the job in reserve grade. They've now done the job in Premier grade. After last year's dismal day on Grand Final, day, a day they would rue to forget. I'm going to drive the horse to get him here, Taylor Brown, hey? motivation to go one better. Ty Eagleson was a coach of Bally's last year with Nathan Hughes to defeat the Panthers. This year he's a coach of the Panthers to defeat, defeat the Seagulls. So Ty Eagleson will have two coaches premiership medallions in two years. He heads to the Clydesdales next year. Pretty handy little resume. Not bad. Third tier competition. <laughs> yeah. 
Even flat footed, I'm terrified to see them come in there. Foxwell, I mean, good Foxwell. Yeah, he's been one of my picks for me in the match, Cole Foxwell. I said at the start of the game, if they were to go one better than last year, it would need to be off the boot of Foxwell. Play on, says the referee. He's touched by a seagull. He's going to go dead in goal. That will be a line dropout for the seagulls. Mm. There's a lot. Well done to the Panthers. They've been... You got players in front of you, Chris. Haven't been defeated this year, the and they were in front with three minutes to go last year in the grand final. Stay behind it. Seagulls valiant, but class outfit that will go to 10 meters. Look out, the big fella <laughs> gets the offload heading to Tali. To Tali in turn. Oh, try in the corner, no, loses the footy, unfortunately, does whack a levu. But good work there from Ballinger. Just started floating across the field like a number seven. The 20 is his most dangerous Ballinger. Floating across the field. He has a really big right hand palm. He loves to play it. So he's also probably his most dangerous in attack when he's defending with those one on one steals. We've seen it become a staple of his game in this season. Wallace comes back in the park. There he is involved in the tackle with. Wait, wait. Panapa. Panapa again involved in the tackle. It's Whitaker down. Tahiri Dummyha. To Mbave, Jared pushes, <laughs> pushes uh, Wallace out of the way. Wallace comes back. Once in about seven months, I think, we've seen the ATG actually be brought to the ground. Mm. Six more. The Six more, says the referee. Tahiri towards Wallace and will take that tackle on the 42 metre mark. Shay will have to get himself a grand final try, albeit won't make too much difference to the result. Lose the football. A one on one should you hate that, Benny Shay. Yeah. Kiss of death. There it is. I like said that's the best of Ballinger. Yeah. Tatali. Who the skip is Eddie Tatali? Yeah, I think he would have to go close to the man of the match as well. Twinkle Toes scored himself a try and has just troubled the defence constantly. I think it's between Snowden, Tortali, Westcott and Foxwell. You want to go? You want to pick a forward in there, mate, being one? Mate, so the forwards have been great, but Westcott is a forward. What are you talking about? Oh, here's Foxwell. Really? What do you mean that really? Right. Do you pick a 13 as part of this point? No, in, they're in the middle of the park. What? 30 meter I'm, line glad, the I'm glad the people of it's Brisbane been a long season mate. seeing what I have to deal with here in the commentary booth I need I need months away from you John three minutes remaining actually in all seriousness thank you and Cameron Anker Mark Glidden Jason Delizio Brendan Creevy they're going to take a penalty they're going to take a penalty kick here um, I'm helping out with the commentary duties throughout the year been a blast it's the red corner bringing you the production this afternoon also to the camera guys all around the, the BRL competitions in trying circumstances. Brought us all the footage all year from Red Corner. A long year, going back to March when we first started. It culminates here in September. Two minutes remaining in the Panthers. Well, denied last year. Not this year, Taylor Brown. Not this year. See Wallace doing a little bit of a merry old jig. I don't know if that's a dance or an injury, but uh, a I like it. <laughs> it's, just like, it's like that's how I dance. Well, it was a dance. It's an injury that'll turn into some swagger in about one and a half minutes. Westcott's going to take this penalty kick. I thought they might have given somebody else a shot, maybe Ballinger. Maybe a retiring a player. A retiring player, there you go. Luke Page had the opportunity in the losing side. Strikes that one nicely, and that will be a extra two points. 36 points to 16, 90 seconds remaining. Seagulls dejected. They'll come back and get things underway. I don't know whether there's a short kickoff this time. Both occasions they've come up with the footy. But well done, as you said, Taylor Brown, the star of the broadcast. They had a shocking start to the season. The first half, they rather forget and they started to come good they got their combinations going they won seven in a row lost to Belimba in the, the 
ball. Qualifying final. He came back for a win last week against the same side in the preliminary final after getting rid of the, the Valley side. And that's a, out in the full Chris Green penalty. They'll probably kick for touch. Yeah, that they will. They'll kick for touch, finish this game off, maybe even a tap, and just kick it straight out. So I'm Britain's name will kick for touch. They're going to go kick for touch. They might fancy themselves with another, another meat pie. You reckon bring up the 40. 40. Well, they lost 41 points to eight. There's 20 seconds to go. There's still some men talking around here. Well, they lost 41 points to eight against the Seagulls. Eddie Tatali puts a kick over the top, nice head. said. <laughs> what that was, we have no idea. But that will wind down the clock here. There will be no time for a scrum as we wait for the Hooter to go here. And there it is. The West Brisbane Panthers are the Chaos Premier A grade champions. They were denied last year. They've gone through 21 games straight without defeat. And a well-deserved premiership. The minor premiers are now the premiers. And the Seagulls, well, well done to getting to the final, but they just weren't good enough against the red-hot West Brisbane Panthers, Taylor Brown. Yeah, they were amazing today, the Panthers. They played an outstanding game of football. As I mentioned, Westcott just consistently turning the big Wynnum team around then getting down the other end of the park. Foxwell and Britton Snowden wreaking havoc on a tired and rugged Wynnum Manly defensive system. They'd gone through at least a month of hard football to get here mm, and they knew it was going to be too hard if they just made them work and work and work and that's what they did yeah, just uh the one try in the second half there to the seagulls to to humphreys and then foxwell and wackalevy with two tries in the second half half time score it was 18 points to 10 so just the one try to the Panthers doubling up Kyle Foxwell with a double. He got one in the first half, one in the second half. And the Panthers, well, they'll be humming tonight. They won the reserve grade by one goal, one point, I should say. And now they've righted the ship. Two years ago, they were denied. Last year, they were denied by three minutes. And this year, well, they've won at 36 points to 16. We'll go to the highlights of this second half, Taylor Brown, and yeah, the Panthers, well, they scored straight. Yeah, they scored first here through Wallace. As you mentioned, that was just back-to-back -back with Pete Hot Potato, and they eventually got six again here. And this is when you knew they were going to come over the top of the Wynnum side. That was a great tip-on to give Kyle Foxwell his second of the match from Ballinger. And the holes were just opening up through the middle of the park because that's exactly where they were tied. Britton Snowden just making the defence work twice over and over and over again. Gets the ball to whack a level on the end there and the swan dive. Here he comes. Boom. He's been turned into an Olympic high jumper. And that looks like it was going to be the last try of the match. They were looking outstanding. And then, of course, this was the last little comeback from Wynnum, they thought. They could piece a few together. Outer just gets on the outside of his men. Gets the arm free. There's questions on how forward or straight it was. But Chris Humphreys strides into the backfield anyway and scores a great try for Wynnum. But it was all Panthers. They've gone through the season undefeated. Congratulations, the West Brisbane Panthers. All right. Well, the presentation will take place very, very soon. On behalf of myself, John Devine, Taylor Brown and all the commentators throughout the year in the BRL. Thanks to Red Corner for their production this afternoon and for their uh, footage throughout the year. And a big shout out for mine to um, the referees who had to wear those outrageous suits all year. Well done to those guys in the slushy suits. And to Brad Talon for hosting BRL Weekly with myself, along with Cameron Anchor and all the guests. Taylor Brown, it's been a pleasure. The season's come to an end. Not for you. You've probably got a game next week. Have you got a Yes, I do. I'll be uh, I'll be behind the microphone for the Hastings Deering's Colts Grand Final next week at Morton Daly Stadium. There you go. So, um, and after that next weekend, uh, Taylor Brown, you will never see him again because he'll probably be um, in rehab. Taylor Brown, <laughs> a pleasure as always, my friend. All the best, and we look forward to you next year in the BRL Chaos Premiership competition. Thanks for your time.
and enjoy the night and safe travels and bye for now. Uh, good afternoon everyone and welcome to the 2022 Chaos BRL Grand Final of BMD Cougar Eye Oval. Uh, thank you to all for being here and what's been a great day, three great games, a great, great contest um, and, and congratulations to the West Brisbane Panthers for taking out the final game for the day. Uh, before we begin our presentations I'll begin today by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. Firstly, I'd like to welcome our special guest up here on the presentation area. We've got our Rugby League Brisbane Chair, Sharon Hickey, our Chaos Business Development Manager, Mitchell O'Reilly, and Wes Funk from Chaos as well. At this stage, I'd like to bring Mitchell forward just to say a few words on behalf of Chaos, our major sponsor for 2022. On behalf of Chaos, um, Camping Adventure, Off-Road and Survival, uh, just want to congratulate all of the teams that participated in this year's A-grade competition. Chaos is uh, honoured to be part of uh, today's grand final and really looking forward to uh, working together with Rugby League Brisbane next year. Um, obviously, congratulations to the finalists and of course our winners today, Wes. Thanks very much, Mitchell. Our first presentation today will be with our match officials for today, the Chaos A Grey Grand Final. Please join me in thanking Jack Ebert, Josh Vernon and Scott Whelan. If you could come forward to receive your medallions, please. Let's put our hands together for the match officials on their performance today. Well done, guys. And now I'd like to call upon the uh, captain of the runners-up today, the, the winner, Manly Junior Seagulls, if you can come forward to say a few words and, and accept your medallions. Thank you.
Um, congrats to the West boys. I mean, that's well deserved to go undefeated. So, congrats to us. Uh, our boys, man, ninth at the start of the season to, to make it to where we are is, is pretty big. And um, so just give yourselves a pat on the back. Um, congrats. Uh, uh, thanks to all the coaching staff and, and everyone here for coming out. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Let's put our hands together for the Wyndham Club and a great effort for 2022. Well done, guys. Uh, now it's my duty to announce the uh, proudly sponsored by the Platinum Sponsored Chaos 4x4 Man of the Match today, which I believe uh, Wes is going to come forward to present. And it goes to the West Brisbane Panthers, number nine, Tobias Westcott. First off, uh, thanks to Wynnum, mate. That was probably one of the toughest games I reckon I've ever played in. Um, the, the finish that you've had to the year is a testament to your club and, and you boys as a group. So uh, I know you, you started off a bit rough, but to win seven in a row um, and, and turn, turn your season around is huge. So congrats to you boys. Um, second, just thanks to everyone else that came out today. That was a really, really cool atmosphere. And, and uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. And to our boys... Um, Probably one of the most enjoyable uh, years of footy and games of footy that I've played. Um, congrats to you boys. Congrats to Big Leon uh, on, on an awesome, awesome footy career. And um, thanks to the, the two Triggs. Uh, love is all. Cheers. Well, let's put our hands together for the man of the match, Tobias Westcott. Congratulations, mate. Uh, now I'd like to call upon the uh, captain of the West Brisbane Panthers to say a few words and, and uh, accept the medallions and call the players out one by one. We have the captain of the West Brisbane Panthers up, please. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to thank Wynnum. Uh, you guys have been outstanding all year, eh? Um, all the best for next year, and thank you for a tough game. Uh, I would just like to thank all the fans, family, supporters for coming out today. It's been a pleasure. You've ride our wave all year, so thank you for that. To our boys, that, love you boys, eh? Mud and blood forever, boys. Thank you. Uh, we'll just get Simon to call out the uh, players one by one to accept their medallions off uh, Wes and Mitchell, please. Yeah. Uh, we got fullback VK. Oh, not really. <laughs> Fullback VK, uh, Dario, Ozzy, Eddie, Joey, Foxy, uh, Boydo, uh, Toby, Osaya, Sammy Collins, Bryn, Jai Ballinger, Punners, Zane Wallace, Michael Butson, and Kalen. Thank you. Simon. Uh, I'll just present the, uh, the, the Premiership Cup now to uh, Simon, Tig, Trigger and Ty. Come around the back there, boys. Bring it around the front, guys. Skip one, two, Simon. Uh, let's put our hands together for the undefeated West Brisbane Panthers 2022 BRL A-grade Premiers.